better. Okay, well, it, it looks like I've got some volume, so I will um, start the talk off now. I can see we've got a few few people in, so we've got 65 uh, people viewing now. So welcome everybody that's uh, joined us for the first Shropshire Wildlife Trust live YouTube talk. And uh, tonight's talk is with me, Stuart, on Shropshire Pine Martins. Um, you'll have to bear with us, as I mentioned, it is our first talk live on YouTube. Um, Although it's fully tested, I'm sure uh, it'll all go swimmingly well. But uh, we'll, we'll just keep an eye out for glitches. And if anybody would like to comment as I'm talking as well, um, I can read the comments and I'll try to uh, keep track of any issues that people report on the, the live chat as well. So without further ado, what I'm going to do, you'll be able to see me hopefully pop up any any minute now. There is a bit of a delay, as I mentioned. so. You will hopefully be presented very shortly with myself and uh, a picture of a pine martin. So we'll just wait to get onto that. But just to give you a bit of background, um, my job role is communications officer at Shropshire Wildlife Trust. Um, but I've also got a bit of a thing for mammals and wildlife um, of the elusive kind. So. What I'm going to be doing tonight is talking to you a little bit about the, the pine martins, my beloved pine martins, and we'll also um, be talking uh, about the, the future of pine martins in Shropshire because it's, it's been a really interesting few years. Now, hopefully you can all see me. So what I'm going to do is get on with the, the presentation. And I just wanted to start by introducing any of you uh, that, that don't live in Shropshire to Shropshire. Uh, it's a little known county but a, a really beautiful county. Um, more people should probably come but I also don't want to encourage too many people because I don't want it to get too busy. But as you can see we're right down on the border with Wales. Um, we're landlocked county surrounded by uh, counties Staffordshire, uh, Cheshire and, and Worcestershire and Herefordshire to the south. and. We've got a variety of, of really uh, nice landscapes. So we've got the meres and mosses up in the north and the, the, the wetlands. Uh, and of course, um, Shropshire is known for its lovely area of outstanding natural beauty, so the, the Shropshire Hills. And that's somewhere that I like to spend a lot of my time. Um, so Pine Martins, I'll talk a little bit uh, more about in a minute. But um, one interesting point to, to make now is that I used to... Um, be obsessed with pine martins prior to this project or, or kicking off um, and I've been for uh, well over 20 years now but I used to spend a lot of time going up to Scotland to see pine martins and I never envisaged that I'd find Shropshire pine martins and being a Shropshire born and bred uh, lad it was um, it was great to be able to uh, look for one of my favourite animals in Shropshire but of course I never expected to find them but what you may also, um, it's, it's worth pointing out as well, um, that we're, we're not going to be talking about this kind of martin. So th this is a, a house martin, uh, the, the flying martin, spelt totally differently. It's spelt with an I and not an E, as in the pine martin. So we're not going to be talking about birds tonight. We're going to be talking about the large mammals. And pine martins are... Um, much bigger than people realise actually. So we were talking about an animal between 60 and 90 centimetres from um, in length from tip of the nose to tip of the tail. They've got that large bushy tail which is a good distinguishing feature if you are looking out for them. And they've also got a cream throat bib. So overall the, the fur is chocolatey brown um, but they've also got that really distinguishable mark in, in the cream throat bib we call it and I'll talk a bit more about throat bibs a little bit later. So they're also um, they're members of the mustelid family so for anybody that's not familiar with the mustelid family that's a great word to remember. Uh, the, the mustelids are the polecats, otters, badgers, stoats and the tenacious weasel so the weasel being the smallest of our uh, native mustelids in the UK. Uh, we've also got American mink which are a member of the, the same family but of course they've been uh, released into the, the countryside in the UK so they're a non-native member. Now going back to pine martins specifically um, they're very elusive so one of the reasons that I'm so attracted to uh, 
to looking for, for mammals is because it's a bit of a challenge. It's, it's great also to go, go bird watching. I, I love going to, to nature reserves to, to do a bit of bird watching and photography, but um, there's nothing like doing mammal tracking and almost um, getting your detective skills, um, uh, putting them to the test. And uh, we're, we're basically look, looking for signs of these things a lot of the time. So we don't see the mammals themselves. And it's great to know that there's loads of wildlife out there that's completely avoiding uh, human eye contact uh, 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 well, pr pretty much their, their whole existence. Um, so pine martins are really quite elusive, as I mentioned. They're trying to avoid humans because we're scary. Um, they're largely arboreal, so they spend a lot of their time tucked away in treetops, uh, really good at climbing, and they've got semi-retractable claws, which they, they use for gripping onto trees. And they can, just, uh, they can run vertically uh, just as quick as they can on the flat. Now, they're, they're also difficult to spot because they're active when there's pretty low light levels. So uh, they're crepuscular, which means they're active at dawn and dusk. And they mate. Um, the, generally, the, the males are, are solitary, but they, they will pair up uh, towards late summer and early autumn. Uh, mating occurs, but the youngsters aren't born until the following spring. And that gives the youngsters uh, a, a good few... Um, like, well, hopefully dry and warm months to it when there's uh, uh, plenty of food around for them to um, get fed up and ready for the, the following winter. Uh, average brood size is four kits, um, but it's very rare that all of those will survive. But of course, it depends on how much food there is about for them uh, and it depends on the predators. Now, I've already said how difficult they are to spot. Even where there's a lot of pine martins, you're not guaranteed to see them but they live in very very low density so a single male territory could be 20 uh, kilometers square so um, we're talking about an animal the size of a domestic house cat that can climb trees generally your chances of seeing them in a woodland are pretty limited and females are uh, slightly smaller in size but also they're covering slightly smaller areas but you can see still quite a considerable amount of woodland for, um, for us to, to go out looking for them so never a guarantee of seeing these martins and one, one of the reasons that I was first completely spellbound by the pine martin was my first encounter when I just fleetingly uh, saw one run across the road during a family holiday in the 80s the um, uh, just that, that, that probably two or three seconds of seeing this animal run across it looked like such an exotic animal that I had no idea that we've got such incredible wildlife so it's um, it was almost the the main reason I became attracted or, or interested in wildlife in in Britain because of course uh, most of the nature programs we used to watch was all about the pine mar uh, sorry not pine martins the, uh, the the wildlife in exotic and tropical countries but then lo and behold it turns out that we've got some pretty spectacular wildlife in the UK too now they were um, quite common. Um, prior to the, the, the spread of humans uh, across the, the UK. So they were really common after the, the last ice age. But the decline really began as more woodland was, was chopped down and uh, humans started to have that, that huge impact on the, the landscape of the British Isles. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the other reasons for the decline. Sorry, I was just, just distracted temporarily by the, the comments coming in, but that's uh, the, n nothing, nothing to stress about at the moment. Um, so the, their decline was um, triggered by loss of habitat, uh, hunting for uh, subsistence uh, going back thousands of years, but also their fur was highly sought after. So a pine martin pelt is, was a highly sought after commodity. The, this is a really warm, uh, great... Um, piece of clothing but also a, a great indicator of people's social status so if during medieval times you were lucky enough to be wandering around with a coat made of pine martin pelts it was a pretty good sign that you were doing okay in life uh, sadly for the pine martins of course they were being hunted in their thousands to make these these fashionable coats for, for us to all wear going into the victorian era uh, the 19th century there, there was a huge rise in the um, um, shooting sports, uh, pheasant shooting, uh, and huge shooting estates started to become managed for um, for the, the rearing and release of things like pheasants and partridges. And of course, because of that, the pine martins 
um, being carnivores or uh, they're opportunists but they will take something that, that, that basically pops along as a, an easy meal so if they come across a pheasant they may um, have a good go at it because of that they were hunted again by the gamekeepers and the gamekeepers kept quite a good record of the numbers of, of pine martins that they used to trap and shoot because of course they would get paid quite a good bounty for that when they, they took that those game bags back to the, the landowner. And it was actually one of those uh, records which made it into the 1893 flora and fauna of Shropshire. And it, that was a, a gamekeeper record of a, a shot pine martin down on a, a hunting estate near Ludlow. Uh, prior to that, there'd actually been quite a few other records of pine martins being trapped and shot in Shropshire woodland. But then it all seemed to stop at that point in 1893. So it was generally assume that pine martins had become extinct at that point in time. But there was anecdotal evidence of, of, of pine martins cropping up every so often. So looking back through some of the archives, we've got um, records in local magazines in Shropshire back in the 1980s, so that, that's a fairly reliable site and back from 1987. And then in 1911 there were the, references to pine martins in the Guardian, uh, the, even the Daily Mail's nature notes and uh, so people were reporting still seeing pine martins back as far uh, up to 1911. Uh, even in the 1960s further afield from Shropshire but over the, the other side of the West Midlands in Coventry um, around the Smethwick area and uh, around Stafford there were records too so there were possibly still pine martins around in the uh, Cannock Chase area. Uh, right up to the 1960s and possibly beyond but of course uh, very difficult to, to prove these things now. Now th I've mentioned that I never really expected there to be pine martins in Shropshire and that was very much the case in 2009 when I became with involved with Shropshire Mammal Group and uh, looking at some of the interesting records that the group made, the, the group is basically compiling records of where all the mammal activity is in Shropshire and I was surprised to see that amongst all the badgers, the, the weasels, uh, grey squirrel records that were, were being sent in, there were also a handful of pine martin records which um, completely captivated me. So of course then I started to plot those records from the grid references onto a map. And it seemed very interesting that these pine martin records, when you put them onto a map, they all seemed to uh, coincide with some nice, uh, pretty decent sized bits of forest down in South Shropshire. And it was quite surprising that all of those were being made by separate people that didn't know each other. And this was all prior to 2009. Um, they, they were all reporting seeing what they said was, was pine martins and they were all within the same area. So with that in mind, I ran a, uh, an appeal, actually a couple of appeals. Uh, the second one was in 2011 to ask people to send in their records or their sightings of pine martins. Uh, just to give people the benefit of the, the doubt because of course we'd assume that, that pine martins were extinct not only in Shropshire but pretty much across most of England and at that point there were probably just a handful of pine martins remaining in Wales but not in viable numbers so in 2015 there were plans by uh, Vincent Wildlife Trust to release some tra uh, translocated pine martins to enhance the woodlands of West Wales uh, by getting pine martins from Scotland where there's, a, there's abundant numbers of, of pine martins and that was in about August uh, 2015. Uh, now in the summer of 2015 I was watching the Vincent Wildlife Trust plans and getting quite excited about the prospects of the definitely being pine martins uh, being released within 100 miles of where I lived um, but I'd pretty much given up any kind of hope of, of finding pine martins myself. One of the reasons for that is because I'd been putting camera traps out as well. So when, whenever I investigated a sighting, if people phoned it to say they'd seen a pine martin or sent me an email, I'd then go to the site and put a camera trap out. And what would happen quite regularly is you may or may not be able to see this. We'll, we'll soon find out. Um, it turned out to be domesticated cats that were actually predating rabbits and things in people's gardens and leaving their disemboweled remains uh, spread across the lawn. Uh, Never pine martins though, but we were getting the things like mink and polecats show up. I was 
Um, I'll probably do a, a, another talk on, on camera traps at some point, but just to touch briefly on what I was doing with the camera traps. Um, back in 2015, I only had, had four or five cameras, and I tended to put them quite low down to the ground just so that nobody could actually see them. But the hope was that if I set them on video, low to the ground, if any animals came in, uh, like pine martin size, I should get good um, like uh, video footage of their features so I'd be able to identify the individuals. So I'd got four or five out, but of course I wasn't recording pine martins. There were people laughing at me in the office because I was dedicating so much time to traveling around the county, speaking to people, wasting hours of my time and quite a lot of petrol, I'm ashamed to say. And by July, I pretty much assumed that there probably weren't any pine martins in Shropshire, all being cases of mistaken identity. That was until uh, one day, uh, one Monday morning, I came to work and I received an email from a chap called Dave Pierce who had said in his email, can you just check the animal in the photograph attached? And I had to check just to see who Dave Pierce was, just to make sure it wasn't a joke, because when I opened the photo, of course the photograph showed a very clear, well I say very clear, it was a good enough image um, for me to identify that we got a pine martin um, in, on camera trap. But of course I didn't believe that Dave had seen this pine martin down in South Shropshire. So I made him match up every tree along that trail so that I could m basically match the photo to the location. And even then I'd started to think it's probably it's probably pulling my leg. It's probably just taking a, a taxidermy or a stuffed pine martin and dragged it through the woodland. So after all the, the years of, of letdown, I was still fairly cynical at this point. But I'd got my camera trapped, so I, I was an ab uh, able to, with Dave to have a look through the woodland and deploy camera traps in the areas that Dave thought the pine martin may have headed to. And. Two weeks later, I returned to the site and just 10 days after Pine Martin, Dave had seen his uh, Pine Martin and got those photos. We'd got the first daytime clips, well, not just the first daytime clips, but actually the first clips of Pine Martins on video in, in Shropshire, but then probably the, the first Pine Martin footage on camera trap in England. And it was incredibly exciting, as you can imagine. But Pine Martins don't like to um, be too predictable, so, we had assumed that the martins would be around for a bit, or that this martin may have just passed through and wouldn't show up again. But you can imagine my excitement when a few more days later, I ventured back to check the camera traps and we'd got a martin still hanging around the same woodland. So not clips every day, but there were at least clips happening every so often. We've talked about the martins inhabiting huge areas. There's a very good chance that this was a martin living in a huge territory and just happened to be going past those camera traps about every week. And of course, we were very excited about it. I got a little bit overexcited about it, to, to be a fair. Um, but it was great for our, our coverage, uh, so it really put Shropshire on the map for a while. Um, so we got mentions in, in the, the local papers and, and it, was like, it was really big news locally. But then really good to see that there was the um, national interest and even international interest so I was shocked to, to receive emails um, uh, asking for quotes from places as far afield, uh, far afield as California and even over in Asia for, for little uh, quotes uh, for, for newspaper articles so it really did get out there thanks to the, the power of the internet but also interestingly ended up in some bizarre places like Horticulture Week which highlighted to me that it wasn't just really me and some of my geeky conservation friends that were interested in pine martins and, and being around. There seems to be a really big wide interest uh, of people all walks of life showing up. And because of that we ended up doing some bits and pieces with Binders today which was great stuff because then the, that that um, was getting more people aware of the, the fact that we've got pine martins around. But of course um, it, it's just a great way of explain to people what a pine martin is so when we get this camera trap footage as we got uh, after doing BBC Midlands today that was the, f the first time that people had even seen uh, pine martins in, in any kind of footage whatsoever so I didn't realise how few people prior to this had no idea what a pine martin was but they were obviously quite interested and with that we couldn't just leave it there so after all that 
uh, toil, uh, seven years of, of searching pretty much. Um, I thought, well, we, we know they're here, but we can't just leave it at that and, and just l let them be or, or possibly even die out. Uh, what I wanted to do is find out how many there were and just to, just to have a look at their geographic range to see how far spread they might be in Shropshire and whether or not they may even be spread into surrounding counties too. And I wanted to raise a bit more awareness of them locally and I also wanted to find out where they were from. Now th this was um, a particularly challenging aspect of the work and I'll just touch on, on this now but what I really needed to do, uh, which uh, is, it sounds more and more far-fetched uh, the, the more the time goes on, I, I look back, but what I wanted was a DNA sample of an animal that was only showing up on camera trap every so often, every week or so, and then during the winter disappeared completely. Um, we wanted that sample that we could show um, the, the origin of, of the animal. So we wanted to know whether or not it was of Scottish origin, which would have meant it was, was it from the haplotype A, so that's the, the uh, geographic uh, family type or genetic type. Um, what we hoped is that we'd find it would actually be haplotype I, which would have been the English-Welsh uh, genetic type of pine marten. But those were presumed extinct, and the, the only reason that we even know they existed is because of a hair sample tested from a, um, a museum specimen uh, almost 100 years ago now. And there's also haplotype P over in Ireland, um, across Europe, there's lots of other different haplotypes where you've got pine martins too. But of course in the UK, pine martins can cover big distances. There's always a chance that those Scottish and English genetic types may have just crossed paths anyway naturally, there's nothing to stop them coming over the borders. So I started to wonder whether or not it would ever even prove that the, the pine martins were here of their own accord or whether or not um, they, they, they may have been dropped off from Scotland at some point in, in the not so uh, re recent past. All right, this, this bit's a little bit gross, but some of my colleagues know exactly what um, I'm going to cover about um, scat and, and poo because it's all I talk about when I'm, I'm in the office, unfortunately. And this is um, a typical pine martin poo. It's twisty, uh, quite shiny looking when it's fresh and it looks pretty dis disgusting, but um, it can be confused with things like fox scat and uh, polecat poo. So there's only one way to find out if you've got a pine martin dropping, and that is to give it a sniff. So we used to go out looking for the pine martin scats. People would collect things up on spatulas and stick them in front of me. I'd give them a sniff, and if they didn't smell sweet, or the, the, some people say like damp hay or, or um, the, the odour of palm violet sweets, it's probably not going to be a pine martin, it's probably going to be something like a fox or a, a polecat, but we, well, I, I sniffed a lot of scatch during that time and didn't come across anything that smelt remotely pleasant. But people came from all over the place and I apologise if Natalie, Phil or anybody else that, that, um, that <laughs> featured in this video is watching now. <laughs> But uh, and Paul here as well. Paul came all the way across from the other side of Staffordshire, um, just to get his nose into some pine martin scat. And Katie and Ben there came across from Birmingham. So you can see we've got some very dedicated people. Uh, and of course, Paul, Paul right there that coming up from Worcestershire. So people again, a huge amount of interest coming from all over the place to to get involved. And it didn't really seem that glamorous. Now I d don't want to. Um, um, belittle their, 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 their skills at finding uh, scats but um, the volunteers weren't that productive at finding scats even I'm not particularly great at finding scats pine martin scats are really difficult to find unless there's a lot of them and they're, they're along trails or um, in pronounced spots on tree stumps and, and, and on rocky um, outcrops so what we also tried was a conservation scat search so using uh, a lovely sniffer dog uh, a, 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 called Luna's. Luna's trained purely to detect pine martin scat and her handler Louise Wilson has done a brilliant job at training Luna and taking her out to detect pine martins all over the UK and Luna could find scats much quicker than me and my volunteers. She could get on, onto trails and show where pine martins may, may have been scent marking but she also did find us four potentially positive pine martin scats which I would then bag up, um, get a grid reference marked onto there and sent it off for analysis. But sadly, 
none of those that Luna found yielded any DNA. And there's a good chance that that's because they were too old um, to, for there to be any viable DNA left in those scats. But um, it's, it seemed that Luna was, was definitely detecting something that um, the lab equipment wasn't detecting, potentially. Uh, just to show how effective Luna was, this is a Pine Martin in Shropshire scent marking on a, a fallen tree over a brook. And over a month later, after it's rained, it's, it's also been incredibly uh, windy weather. Uh, that, that scent is still there and Luna's picked it up despite it being a good metre or so off the ground. So Luna was a, a, a wise investment and um, it, it's well worth using Luna if we don't find scats, but to actually find out where the Pine Martin trails might be. Now, what I should mention is uh, the, the, the str strangeness when it comes to habitat in South Shropshire. So we never anticipated Pine Martins being able to do well in South Shropshire because a lot of the woodland down that way is actually quite young. Uh, a lot of it was felled uh, pre-war um, and during the, the First and Second World Wars and then replanted. So a lot of these big old trees um, aren't quite old enough to, to have hollows and the, the, the denning options. So pine martins like good ho old hollow trees that they can move into to, to rear their young and to, to tuck themselves away from the weather. Uh, where there's not hollow trees, we can put in den boxes. And uh, I was very kindly accompanied by John Martin and Johnny Burks uh, the first year after we, we discovered the martins. And they helped put, put these den boxes up, as you can see, about 15, meet, uh, 15 feet or so up, up trees. And that's just to offer the pine martins somewhere to safely get off the ground to, to rest or, or to, to rear their young, as I, as I mentioned, um, and out of the reach of things like foxes. Um, the hope was that the pine martin would also go in and leave us a hair sample. But what also happens in Shropshire, we've got lots of grey squirrels. So where we did, did put den boxes up with cameras on, within hours of putting the, the den boxes up, we'd often find that the camera traps recorded grey squirrels moving in straight away so that poor pine martins weren't getting a look in. But that could also be uh, an interesting point. Um, we, we're still not too sure if pine martins here are predating grey squirrels. I'm sure they are. Uh, there, there's lots of grey squir squirrels around for them. And pine martins definitely have an impact on grey squirrels in other parts of the UK. But we're still looking for evidence that the pine martins may keep the grey squirrel population in check. Um, and, and that's where the, the den box is, we're hoping uh, by monitoring the den boxes we'll see if any pine martins go sniffing around the den boxes the squirrels are using. So get, getting away from the, the DNA and the, the den boxes, uh, what, uh, one of the other points I mentioned earlier was uh, getting the individuals so we could count how many pine martins there were out there in, in the, the um, Shropshire Hills area. And to, to do that I needed to get the chest bib so each pine martin has a, a, a very distinctive chest bib pattern and I devised this tunnel which I took up to Scotland and you can see in Scotland there's lots of pine martins and they're very obliging they come straight into the tunnel and show their chest bib there so you can see from that that video clip pine martin is just proudly shown his chest bib and we can see his pattern take a freeze frame of that and match it against other pine martins by far the easiest way to tell the, the different individuals apart so buoyed by that experiment up in uh, Scotland, I bought the tunnel back, set it up on the ground in Shropshire, and of course before a pine martin could get anywhere near it, uh, Mr Badger got there first. And um, I, I won't tell you that, what the badger did, but it, that the the tunnel was pretty much wrecked after that badger had finished with it. It, it stank and no other wildlife would go anywhere near it so it took a bit of washing off uh, so I, I cleaned off the, the uh, badger mess that, that, that had been kindly left for us and decided to move it up a tree out of reach of badgers but of course still within reach of pine martens and when you do that of course you get Mr and Mrs Owl coming to, to have a look instead so the the tunnel cam was attracting lots of really great wildlife but not necessarily the, the wildlife that I was after although I get to show this stuff at talks now so it's not all bad news. At the same time we had got pine martins still showing up on camera traps in other parts of the woodland well away from the tunnel. The pine martins here weren't going for the bait so we were using things like honey and peanut butter 
not once did a Hi Martin in Shropshire that I've recorded yet go anywhere near any peanut butter or honey. Um, they just seem to either check the camera trap out because they're inquisitive, and another trait of the, the mustelid family, or um, it's just a case of the camera trap being in just the right place at the right time. In 2017 we had our first daylight clips of what appeared to be a young male pine martin, so that this was a good promising sign that uh, pine martins had bred in, in South Shropshire, which was great news. Uh, but it was also really great news to see these pine martins in Shropshire coexisting with their other mustelid uh, cousins, so that things like badgers showing up in the same area. And the smaller member of the mustelid family, uh, distinguishable with the black tail tip, is the stoat. So it's just great stuff to, to see all of these um, pretty elusive animals um, showing up right here in Shropshire. And it's only thanks to the camera traps that we even know that they're all about. And uh, just to give you an idea of how clever pine martins are, they do sometimes out with me. But uh, you may have noticed from the previous clip of a pine martin, it was running away from the camera trap and not showing his bib. So a couple of years later I thought I'll catch the pine martin out this time, move the camera trap to the other end of the branch and of course the clever pine martin showed up from the other side instead. But what we did get there, if I slow it down, is just a side profile of that pine martin bib and we can see a couple of distinguishable features there that um, would enable me to track that martin in, or plot it against other bibs that I've recorded on, on camera trap. And that this was a, another individual martin, a big large male. And um, I'm just going to play that again because I just want everybody to remember the size of that. So you can see the size of the martin there. Again, in, in, the, in the original woodland, we found martins and another big male passing through. So that was uh, at the time, we think about the seventh pine martin that we detected on camera trap. At the same spot, we've also got the other member of the mustelid family, the polecat, and you can see how much bigger a pine martin is than a polecat, so that this polecat is uh, probably about a third shorter than the, the, the pine martin. But again, really exciting that we're able to view both members, uh, both cohabiting the, the same patch of woodland. Now, the, the young one that showed up on the, the tree branch that I mentioned, the, the, uh, the pretty obvious um, a bib pattern also then started to show up the following year um, and he was using this trail quite regularly but what you'll notice there that he did some scent marking that didn't involve leaving a, sc a scat so this pine martin has uh, just basically left a scent deposit with, with his scent glands uh, which is just pressed to the ground that's quite unusual because in Scotland and in other parts of Europe where there's a lot of pine martins pine martins tend to always use their, their droppings um, for lots of reasons uh, for attracting males and, uh, and mates in uh, for basically plotting their roots around their own territories and of course for, for using as territorial markers to keep off other other pine martins this pine martin doesn't seem to be leaving us any scat whatsoever which explains why it was so difficult going back a, a few years as to why we weren't finding scat anywhere uh, the, the martins uh, have showed up pretty much um, everywhere along the, the Clun Valley that I've put camera traps out. Um, so I've had camera traps out on uh, big private bits of woodland. Um, but I've also tried to venture a bit further afield and now detected well, that in 2018 we got our first pine martins uh, up towards Church Stretton. And that actually lined up nicely with quite a reliable sighting of a pine martin that we had in Marshbrook back in 1997. So that indicated that maybe those um, big forestry plantations at the south end of the Long Min may have been um, suitable for pine martens and that there may have been a, a limited population in there already. Uh, over the last year though, we've now recorded pine martens right over towards Bishop's Castle too and further north, um, further north of Lydham. So they seem to be across the, the wider landscape but not in huge numbers. So some people do worry that if there's, there's pine martins out there, they, they may have an impact on uh, things like your ground nesting birds and, and songbirds because they're, as I mentioned before, they're opportunists. They will, they will predate some 
um, species. They will go for birds every so often, but they have a, a very varied diet, so they'll go also for uh, your, uh, herb, herbal vegetation, uh, fruits and berries, uh, and nuts as well. So uh, they don't necessarily have a, a huge impact on uh, the, the other animals living in the same um, ecological system as themselves. Now I'm going to just flick on um, to show you that it's not always good news. Um, I've had camera traps out all over South Scotia now for, for quite a few years and I've been very lucky touch wood not to have any camera traps stolen yet. But I've had a few traps of vandalism and you'd assume that this was probably a person but uh, if you just watch it for long enough you really see the culprit eventually. And it's quite terrifying watching this back when I started to go through all the footage from the SD card. I mean, took the camera trap, um, found it lying on the floor, and I found it was actually a very feisty, testosterone fueled roe deer who tried to smash the camera trap up, left it lying on the floor, where it then recorded endless clips of other deer, squirrels, and, uh, and also munjack deer going past. So sometimes the wildlife does sabotage my efforts to, to monitor the pine martens, and that, of course, would have an impact on the number of pine martin records that I get in a year. But the pine martins do sometimes show up randomly where I, I'll just put out some bait there. There's some, uh, that's actually a tin of sardines hanging off a tree. The pine martin just happened to be going along that track and didn't even stop to sniff at the, the sardines. But what they have started to stop at is uh, that the latest experiment has been with a piece of plumbing pipe with a a T bend on on the top, and what we do is put th um, some uh, like peanut scent in there, and mice and squirrels can't eat it, um, which is what happens generally when I, when I put anything out that's sweet smelling, pe uh, peanut butter or jam, uh, squirrels and mice get there first. Now it had been two weeks before a pine martin had actually found this this tube that was full of bait. Um, generally, the bait would be gone within about two or three hours of me putting the, the camera trap out and, and, and the food out uh, thanks to the grey squirrels so this seems to be quite an effective way of getting the pine martins to stand up and hopefully show their bibs but at the same time at another site where uh, three years ago three and a half years ago Luna the sniffer dog had detected a martin going across this branch there'd been no activity of a pine martin there for, for quite a long uh, long period but then all of a sudden this martin started showing up uh, not just once but um, pretty much every three weeks again uh, following the same branch on a trail and, and scent marking but very much unpredictable behavior and it's quite interesting to note there that that pine martin's got a winter coat so the, the winter coat is much much thicker than the, the summer coat which does make the, the, the martins look a bit um, like bigger animals actually during the, the winter. And this was the closest we got to getting a pine martin moving to a den box. A den box that had actually blown out of a tree during some storms. Um, just very, very um, briefly had a pine martin investigate it and I always wonder what would have happened if the, the wind had blown that den box out of the tree. We may have got a pine martin moving for the first time. And just to show how good camera traps are getting now, so this is a Browning camera trap. Uh, it's it's got a, an interesting name that I can't remember, uh, but it's something along the lines of Recon Pro. And the the camera traps now actually uh, they don't drown out the chest bib like a lot of the the earlier camera traps did. So we're getting much more reliable uh, data from the, the the chest bib patterns thanks to the the advances in camera trap technology. Uh, this year you can see that we've put out some more of our up, um, I, I don't even know what to call them, our bait tubes and, and again a pine martin's just stopped to check it out there. And at another site, this was by far our best clip and this is just from last month, the pine martin just standing up and giving us a nice clip of, of his bib there. So often we can try all kinds of complicated things but it's it's sometimes uh, in nature we find that it's the, the most simple things that, that are most effective. And this is a clip actually just from last week so this is a, an exclusive clip that I haven't, I've tried not to share on social media um, so I could show everybody tonight but this is a, a Martin hanging around in a new area that we'd only put the camera trap out um, a, f a few weeks before and it's already recorded this Martin passing through 
every three or four days so it's be, become our most effective uh, camera trapping location and I'm hoping that we'll get some more footage from there uh, on the ne next checks which will probably be next week now but what is interesting here is this is actually a really thin strip of woodland that just happens to be a, a link between one big patch of oak woodland and one big huge patch hundreds of acres of pine plantation and I put that camera trap in there speculatively just to see if anything might be using it as a corridor and when I talk about a corridor it's, it's not like a, a hospital corridor uh, we're, we're talking about a natural corridor or a green corridor that acts as a nice habitat link uh, across the landscape and so to demonstrate this I've done this I think you'll, you'll all be very impressed with my artistic prowess when it comes to using Photoshop and Publisher uh, th these are forests and this is a very simple depiction of uh, a landscape that isn't particularly well connected. So South Shropshire, uh, lots of hill farms and uh, cultivated uh, land and not a lot of connectivity between the woodlands. Uh, in some parts of the, the UK it's even worse, uh, there's just very very isolated patches of woodland which as you can see from these, uh, they're almost like islands of, of woodland. Now martens uh, and other animals like dormice tea they need that connectivity, so they need good quality hedgerows and um, stretches of, of cover that they can move amongst those smaller patches of woodland. Now, so you can see there, it's quite difficult that Pine Martin in the woodland over to the left is going to have to cross a lot of open land, which isn't preferable to a Pine Martin if he wants to get to another patch of woodland in search of a, a mate or somewhere safe to, to den up. So, um, this is what we'd be aiming for. We want to try and link that with these patches of woodland so that the pine martins can move from bit of woodland to uh, woodland and move around fairly undetected and uh, obviously be much safer. Um, there's all kinds of... Uh, this is very, very um, ambitious, but there's already uh, plans in place for the, the March area in South Shropshire um, to uh, undergo some, some work to increase the forestry cover and hopefully over the next few years the, the forestry cover is going to increase from about 7% um, up to 17%. So the, the, this isn't just for pine martens, of course there's the climate change need. Uh, people realise there's the importance uh, of trees in absorbing CO2 and compa combating climate change. And if planting woodland is good for us, it's also going to really benefit the wildlife, such as the pine martens, which could easily become the, the iconic or poster boy species uh, of this uh, woodland regeneration. So hopefully, because we found these martens down in South Shropshire, we'll be able to start expanding our woodland cover from what you can see you now. We've already got uh, quite good woodland cover down in South Shropshire and stretching into Herefordshire. But there's also lots of opportunities. So. Uh, our data and conservation officer Joe has very kindly put these maps together um, showing where there's been um, areas of opportunity mapped by the Environment Agency and the green patches are patches of existing woodland and many of those that we know that there's pine martins in now and those pink areas represent areas of opportunity so that's land that uh, could be planted up with woodland again because of course there's a huge interest, uh, dis despite what's happening now uh, with the, the crisis situation, there's still a need to uh, look at the climate crisis and there's still a huge interest in uh, planting trees where possible. But we don't just want to plant trees anywhere and that's why um, we've also listed the prior priority habitat. What we don't want to be doing is planting trees in on nice heathland or uh, improved grasslands and really nice uh, other habitats that are already in decline themselves so we've also mapped out where those areas are that we shouldn't be encouraging people to plant trees but you can see that there's a huge uh, like vision for South Shropshire uh, going right the way across into Radnorshire in Wales and into Herefordshire to start linking up all this brilliant habitat which is only going to benefit the pine martens and of course it will benefit us in, in the long run too. And hopefully for the martens that we've got, the population that we've got down in Shire Shropshire, which I'll introduce um, as best as I can through camera trap still uh, shots, uh, that the future is going to be much brighter. It's going to be much easier for them to move around, meet up, and of course their breeding success rate is going to be much be better if they're able to move around 
uh, safely without being detected or of course uh, uh, without having to venture out across open patches of, of farmland. So just to give you an idea of the, the bib patterns that we've collected over the years, so that, that was one back in 2015 with a, a spot pattern. Another really small looking martin there, another patch of woodland uh, down towards the Herefordshire border. Of course the original martin that we got had a really nice clean uh, throat bib, uh, no, no patches on there whatsoever. Uh, this martin looked very, very similar to the martin over on the, the left-hand side, uh, but this was another martin recorded at a site several miles away from where that martin was, pretty much at the same time, so two martin bibs look very similar. And just to flick through, we've got all of these different bibs, uh, th this from this year, uh, another one from this year, and th this this pine martin that showed up uh, most recently, uh, well, as recently as February this year that we hadn't detected before. So um, at the moment, it looks like we've got between 13 and 15 different individuals on camera, uh, which sounds like a good number, but there needs to be much more, um, a much bigger population of pine martins to make that population viable. They're dependent on the linked um, good quality woodland habitat as well to, to be able to breed and, and to, to find all the food they need. And there, there is still a bit of work to do, but obviously, uh, as I've just laid out there, there are plans, and as ambitious they are, um, it's going to be great news for um, things like ecotourism. And there's, there's actually a, a huge interest in people trying to see wildlife as part of their holidays, so um, why not come to Shropshire and be lucky enough uh, to, to encounter these pine martins in what we thought um, was pretty decent habitat as it is but just having something like a pine martin around just makes that woodland seem even more special. Now you can see that we've um, we've already got 21 records of pine martins on camera trap in 2020. Um, I haven't been able to check all the camera traps as regularly as I would have liked over the last few weeks but hopefully uh, we'll be able to up the ante as uh, the restrictions start to, to lift. So the future's looking pretty good it's certainly good for me because it means that I get to spend a bit more time playing out looking at camera traps um, but it's also really exciting to know that there's definitely pine martins out there and uh, well long may it continue so thank you all for listening to the first uh, YouTube uh, live talk uh, there's quite a few comments which I was going to go through to see if there were um, any questions but if anybody does have questions you'd like to ask um, feel, feel free to type them in and I will try to answer any as quickly as I can. At the moment it looks like uh, there's been, it's great to see there's been lots of conversations uh, happening. There is a, a comment there from Ian at the Beaver Trust, hi Ian, um, to talk about uh, reintroductions uh, how, and how they work out. Uh, what we often find um, uh, with the population that we've been monitoring is that there's sometimes a bit of a misinterpretation of uh, uh, of the, the ones that we've been monitoring and it's assumed they were actually um, originating from the Vincent Wildlife Trust uh, translocation of pine martins from Scotland to Wales in 2015 which was in August. Now we actually started monitoring the pine martins and we discovered them on camera trap um, down in South Shropshire in July 2015, uh, just prior to there being any releases, uh, which is why I was so keen to find out if somebody else had already taken things into their own hands and started to release them anyway. Um, but to be honest, we just don't know. Uh, there's a possibility that people have uh, illegally translocated Martins down from Scotland at some point in the past, but there's also a possibility that uh, based on anecdotal evidence, there may have already been Martins still clinging on uh, in some of the most remote stretches of woodland in South Shropshire but we don't know but all we can now do is celebrate the fact that they're here and make sure that we don't lose them. So I've got a, a question from Terry. Um, can I make the pipe post upright from rough timber to attempt to get some hair for DNA? Well what we've done now Ian, because it, they've obviously been, been pretty reliable at attracting the martins in, I've actually been putting a, a little piece of um, like double-sided carpet tape on um, around the base. So if a pine martin comes up and, and stands up against the tube, it should pick up a, a hair sample. So I'm hoping that that will be the case. 
Pine Martins are pretty un unpredictable. I fully expect that a Pine Martin won't go near one of those tubes if it's got carpet tape on, but hopefully we'll be able to report back in a few months' time. Okay, I've got uh, another question here uh, from South Wales. Uh, any any Martins in the Y Valley? Well, I would say uh, there has been a, a re-release uh, over the last two years down in the Forest of Dean, um, uh, which has been a, a joint project between uh, Vincent Wildlife Trust and Gloucestershire Wildlife Trust, with some some input from Forestry England, and they. Uh, released about 30, 35 or so pine martins in the forest of Dean, which have, will have spread out a little bit, and I would say that they, they will have now ended up in the Y Valley. So I, I think that there probably are now pine martins over in the Y Valley, yes. And wire forest is a, another option. So Emma Tips in there has mentioned uh, the wire forest. Now we, we've got, uh, we haven't got camera traps out in the wire forest, we're, we're trying to cover, cover quite a big area, but we do get anecdotal sightings of pine martins not far from the wire forest down at um, and the, the, the Clee Hills area and down towards Bewdley. So what we really need is somebody to uh, possibly get a few of their own camera traps and start putting them out uh, just, just along the, the forest boundaries down there too. So you never know, I never say never. And another question from Midlands Birder there. Um, any plans on expanding the camera trap project into the southeast of the county? Oh, I think I, I've just touched on that there. It is something that I'm really keen to do, but one of the um, sticking points really is, is having the time to cover such a big geographical region. And I, I get to spend about a, a day or half a day a week uh, w when I can fit it in checking the cameras. And that's why it's really all about having more people volunteer. So if people are interested in volunteering, they can um, contact me, uh, look me up on the Shropshire Wildlife Trust uh, website as well, uh, where you can read all about the, the project. So you could even become a member if you're not already a member of Shropshire Wildlife Trust. And uh, you can contact me directly. Uh, so if people are keen to, to get involved, please feel free to give me a shout. Uh, another question there from Chris Robinson. Hi Chris, we've uh, read in an old book that they live in underground burrows. Is this true? Um, uh, interesting point is that uh, we, we refer to the Pine Martins being arboreal and living in dens well off the ground, but uh, in places that I've spoken to um, uh, doing projects over in Europe, a lot of their Pine Martins do den uh, in burrows, uh, old uh, disused badger sets, and, and even disused fox earths. So I think that, that there is, if there's limited denning potential or areas for pine martins to live up in trees, they're, they're very adaptable. So they'll, they'll go for those uh, ground-based uh, burrow systems instead. And I've got a comment there that from H plants, sorry, I can only see H plants, but so I'll call you H for now. But, um, Natural England and Forestry Commissioner Worcestershire Wildlife Trust may be up for supporting traps, uh, camera traps in the wire forest. Yeah, that, that's uh, something that we will definitely hope to do later this year, um, as, as soon as things start uh, uh, lifting. So yeah, fingers crossed. Uh, Richard Summers has mentioned his Pine Martin sighting that down at, no, that I've spoken to Richard uh, before and uh, Richard was lucky enough to, to see a, a Pine Martin down on the edge of, of Ludlow. Now I haven't mentioned the, the Pine Martins even further south uh, because we don't know enough about the, the ones around the, the Ludlow area so we, we have got um, them sh show up um, not far from Ludlow just um, and just into the border with Herefordshire but at the moment, we we haven't got full permission to do, continue with the monitoring in that area, and and of course it's a time restriction. So um, there will be more plans to do some more monitoring, and hopefully uh, we've got uh, some great people down in, in the Ludlow branch and friends of Wycliffe Common, uh, friends of Ludlow. Um, sorry, friends of Wycliffe have also got their own camera trap, have, as have the the local branch, which I'm hoping may detect a, a pine martin or two for us. 
the question from Gavin. I know pine martens are being filmed in the New Forest. Is that likely to be a reintroduction? In the New Forest, uh, that there's been uh, some rumours of um, escapees from uh, captive rearing programmes. So there, there are uh, collections uh, in captivity. Uh, I v very much uh, doubt that, they, that they've been in the, the New Forest. The New Forest is quite um, heavily populated now and it is very busy. And I'm sure that people would have been seeing Pine Martins for uh, a long time down there. But um, it, it would seem they're probably escapees from collections rather than a, a natural uh, population. Well, I think we've... Um, oh, that, uh, th th just a quick note from uh, Whitchurch Branch. Uh, hello, Whitchurch Branch. And uh, it should have been their, their branch meeting tonight. So I'm glad that we, we coincided uh, that this talk with the, the branch meeting. Because, of course, our branches are very active normally, but also very frustrated at the moment. They, they can't have their, their regular meetings. So I'm glad that we're able to do this and at least do something that allows us to get together and speak about things that we're all passionate about. So at least... Uh, we can still do this through the powers of technology. And one more question, I think, before we, we knock off, and that's from Karen Mitchell. How big are Pine Martin territories? Um, well, they vary quite a lot, Karen. It all depends on the uh, like abundance of prey. It depends on the amount of connected uh, woodland and the, the quality of the woodland as well. So in good quality habitat, a Pine Martin might only have a, a, a small territory of maybe six kilometers square that maybe as big for a male 10 kilometers square but when they're in areas where the, the habitat's very fragmented and they're, they're, they've just got little patches of woodland that are maybe just a handful of acres they're much more likely to, to be inha inhabiting a territory probably well up over 20 kilometers square so that they can cover huge distances all right i, I have to just um Take, take this question about grey squirrels. Uh, there's a question here. Uh, have I noticed any effects on the grey squirrels from the pine martens? At the moment, no. I'd like to say that I've got loads of camera trap footage of pine martens venturing uh, along with, with grey, grey squirrels in their mouths. But at the moment, there's been no, no sign of it. But, of course, these are really difficult to, to monitor animals. And we, we're not really seeing a huge amount of their, their behaviour down in Shropshire. All we know is that they're there because of the camera traps. They're not leaving us physical evidence that they're there. Um, we, we're, just, we're just really keeping our fingers crossed that the Pine Martins get used to the camera traps. We've got more camera traps out that are more reliable and they may start um, acting in front of the camera traps a bit more so we can learn more about them. Right, so I'm going to leave it there now. There's, it's, it's been an hour. There's been no technical glitches that I can... Um, notes so everything's gone really well so thanks everybody for joining me and as I say if you want to keep in touch just drop me a, an email or, or you can obviously contact me through the Shropshire Wildlife Trust website okay thank you very much